All right, time for another edition here of Krantz's Corner. And, you know, we've been talking so much football over the last couple of weeks because, you know, football's in your week five in the NFL and this and that. I don't think people, a lot of people notice basketball and hockey are starting like, like soon basketball has started. Hockey's a week away. Like we're right there. And as you saw last year on, on uh Francis corner here, we brought in Wes Goldberg. Uh, Wes is awesome. Wes has got a podcast. Wes is all over the place. He writes, he's podcasting. He's at practice every day, locked on heat. You name it. He's doing it. Wes, first off, welcome back to Francis corner and welcome back to the NBA, the NBA season. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm it's it, I'm glad we're back to basketball games almost right, being played almost. here. We can kind of get away from the the rumors and all the trade stuff, but then also not really because all that stuff is still sort of out there lingering uh still. So, uh but yeah, I am very excited to to get to some watch some basketball games here pretty soon. All right, I saw you at media day yesterday. Obviously, the first question is going to be this. Jimmy Butler walks out with that hair. It's different yeah. today. He's he's back to regular Jimmy Butler today. Uh, but he owns Media Day, right? Two years in a row now, this guy has dominated Media Day all over the NBA. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, I went right to uh, – well, I, I did a couple of things right away. One of the things I did was go uh, – a little bit later was go to uh, the the Reddit page, uh, the NBA Reddit page. And all these Media Days are happening, most of them. Like, I think 28 of the 30 were happening right. on Monday. And all the top stuff was just Jimmy Butler's hair, right? And look. You and I know what media day is. It's a, just a bunch of gobbledygook kind of, right. hey, every, I, I, I weigh 15 pounds. I added 15 pounds of muscle, and we're going to play faster, and we're going to shoot more threes this year. Like right. that's Copy and paste it for every player, every coach across the league. But I love that Jimmy comes in and just gives us something. And you know what was funny? Uh, Eric Spolstra was asked about it today by, I guess, somebody that wasn't at media day. And Spoh goes, you know what's so funny is you guys make such a bigger deal, you know, talking to the reporters there. You guys make such a bigger deal about this than I do. And I was like, yeah, obviously, like <laughs> you're the coach. Your job is to coach the team. You shouldn't be right. thinking about this. Our job is to create content. We are Correct. absolutely creating content from this. So, yeah, we do make a big deal out of this. <laughs> and Jimmy knows it. And it's great. And we're all having fun here. Right. Uh, the other thing that I did, Zach, was I I, I wrote a story on Jimmy Butler's dreadlocks last year. Right. When he came in with the dreads. I wrote a story on that for the ringer and talked with the hairstylist that did that. And I texted her right away. I was like, is this you? Like, are you responsible for this? And she texted me back right away. Like, no, this is not me. Wow. This was not my idea. She was not going to take any responsibility for that. Even though she took responsibility for it last year, She's like, this one, I am far away from this. Do not blame me for this. I thought that, I thought that was pretty funny. That is, that's I mean, that, that's right there. That's investigative reporting people. If you're watching and you're listening to this, because that is, that was literally the talk of the town last year and the talk of the town this year after media day, Jimmy Butler walking in. And there were plenty of storylines that were going into media day that everybody wanted to see how Tyler Hero was going to react to everything, wanted to see Spolstra comment on everything and the rest of the players. So what did you gain from media day yesterday outside of probably getting a little bit of clarification, but really not from Tyler Hero? Everyone else, how was your summer? How What have you worked on this and that, blah, blah, blah. Like you said, the minutia of nothing. Tyler Hero was really the only person I wanted to see talk yesterday, really to see what his attitude was like. And what the answers to all the questions were, what did you get from Tyler, uh, whether it was the podium or one-on-one, -on -one, like a lot of people got him? So I'm with you. Uh, I was very interested to hear from Tyler Hero. And um, there that was a question that people like you and I were asked a lot, and, and we were asking a lot of people because right. it was a very big conversation, was how does he respond to being – and we can't even call them trade rumors. Like these were no. full-blown discussions. Like these, this was happening. Like there, And I actually respected – Tyler in, a, in the way that he's handled a lot of this on social media. I actually like the poking fun of the whole thing. Right. Um, and, and I respected that he did not call them rumors that he didn't like so many people, athletes or otherwise have gotten accustomed to kind of just putting it on the media right. and making it the media's fault so that they can kind of rally against or around that. And so he didn't do that. He's like, he, he was, oh, these were discussions. These ones, right. this felt very real to me and ultimately it didn't happen. And I'm still here. And the sense I get from Tyler Hero talking with him um, yesterday and today is he's just got like this sort of like F you attitude, like D gaff, like whatever. Um, I'm just going to do my thing. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to go out here and hoop. And, uh, and, and for the record, I'm really good at hooping. Like <laughs> this guy scored 20 yeah. points per game uh, over the last two seasons. So he's going to do it again this year. And uh, I think he, he can, he's also one of those guys who kind of like Bam comes back having added something to his game every season. And I also say this, 
I have never gotten the impression that the Miami Heat are trying to get rid of Tyler Hero. And I think Tyler Hero knows that. Mm. I think that they would be willing to trade him for Kevin Durant or Damian Lillard, two guys right. who showed up on the NBA's top 75 all-time list. Right. But I don't think that they're trying necessarily to trade him. I think that like this is not black and white. I think these are two very different things. And I think Tyler Hero is very self-aware um, and and uh, understands that, okay, at least I'm being dangled in trade talks for first ballot, no-brainer Hall of Famers. And Correct. it's not like I'm getting traded like Jordan Poole got traded for, you know, I don't even remember Paul, that. who's a Hall of right. Famer, but at a very different stage of his career. Correct. Uh, and essentially expiring contract. So um, I, I, I just, I've been very impressed, I think, overall with how Tyler Hero has carried himself. And by the way, we love villains in South Florida sports. Of course. Like, we love them. And I think, I, I won't go so far as to say he's going to play the villain, but I think he's just, I, I love the, like, the, again, I'll, I'll use the same phrase, that sort of degaff, come at me if you want. I don't care what you think. My trade value is hotly debated and dragged through the mud all summer long. And I think he's extremely undervalued at this stage of his career. And I think he's he's out here to show some f- people and maybe he's even still some people in, in Miami's front office. I totally agree with every with literally that last statement you just said is exactly the way he wasn't dangled out there for even like a Drew Holiday or anyone mm-hmm. like that. You said it right. Dame Lillard and Kevin Durant. If anything, it should show to Tyler Hero, listen, we love you. And if we could get one of these superstars, listen, you got to be part of the trade. But otherwise, we gave you the extension. We want you here. Like, we wouldn't have paid you if we didn't want you here. We would try to get rid of you for that. And we gave you the money. But if Kevin Durant's on the market or Dame Lillard's on the market or a Hall of Famer, like you said, is on the market, we're trying to win now. And this is what we got to do. So it is a business. And he understands that, which is good, too, because he could have come in as a salty dog, didn't want to talk to anybody, yes or no questions to the podium, head down, get through media day, start practice, and then just be disgruntled. And he didn't look at yesterday. I even poked fun at him when he came into one of our little rooms for for the radio. And I was just like, are you having a fun time? And he just kind of like smiled at me. And I'm like, good, we broke the ice. Now let's talk. Like, (laughs) that's the way to handle that situation. I think he did handle it perfectly. All right, so we we started practice day one today. And I think the biggest news to come out of that, and we we talked about it briefly before you came on the video, uh, Kyle Lowry. Because you look at the depth chart on this team, and obviously Gabe is gone, and Tyler could play some point guard, but Kyle Lowry thinks from day one he's going to be the starting point guard on this team, and I think that that's kind of news to a lot of people. Not that I didn't think he would be in the rotation or be one of those guys. I just didn't know if he was going to start, but I think he's starting by default, kind of, because that's what they have on the roster. What are your thoughts when you heard that today and going forward with Kyle Lowry? Yeah, I wasn't surprised to hear him say that, even if I might disagree with him. You know what I mean? And so uh, going into media day and training camp, I tended to think that Kyle Lowry is going to come off the bench because his best stretch and Miami's best stretch last year came with him coming off the bench. And so, you know, just rinse, repeat and keep doing that again. Despite the fact that Gabe Vincent is gone, like I don't think that you need a traditional point guard in today's NBA. Look at the Phoenix Suns. They don't even care. They just traded their traditional point guard for the most non-traditional lineup maybe we've ever seen. Right. So it's, um, but at the same time, I, 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 after these first couple of days, I'm starting to think that maybe Kyle Lowry is going to start. I, he says he expects to start. He also hasn't talked to Eric Spolstra about it. And Eric Spolstra hasn't talked to him about it. I think that training camp and preseason are going to be very instructive as to how uh, Spo puts together his starting five and obviously the rotation uh, all uh, overall. But based on some of the other things that were said, like, I think it was, um, I think it was, yeah, Spo was asked about Tyler Hero maybe playing point guard this year, right? right. With people anticipating right. the same thing that you and I are anticipating. And he said, I'm not going to write it. I'm not, I don't know that I'll be writing in Tyler Hero at point guard. And I found that really interesting because you literally do have to write in somebody at point guard if right. you're the head coach. Like 10 minutes before the game, you get a sheet and then ask you, who's the point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center? And one of your assistant coaches has to fill it out. Somebody's got to get literally written in at point guard. And if it's not going to be Tyler Hero, then I think it's fair to wonder who is. And look, he could just put Josh Richardson in there or something. Right. He, could, he could put Bam at a – like there's no rules. Like he could put Bam at point guard. It doesn't matter. But the point being is I do wonder if Spo does think that that starting group needs like more of a table setter like Lowry to get Jimmy easy buckets, to get Tyler off the ball as opposed to being on the ball so much so that maybe Tyler could be on the ball with the second unit where he's more accustomed to doing those things over the last few years uh, to get bam, those, those 15 foot like free throw jumpers that he likes right. so much. I do wonder if he's looking at that and say, you know what? We do need just sort of a traditional point guard to get us in our offense. And then by the way, 
just like Kevin Love starts for six minutes and then comes out. Maybe it's the same thing with Kyle Lowry. That way we can kind of manage his minutes and keep him in that 20 to 25 range that were so effective for him uh, down the stretch and, and during that finals run. Yeah, I think that's a, that would be a great idea by Spolster at that point. And, and that was bringing me right into my next question. The front court, Kevin Love, Bam, Jimmy, that's what you expect the starters to be? Yeah, I think like, obviously Jimmy's in Sharpie, Bam's in Sharpie. The Kevin right. Love one is sort of the the what it's an. I think he's got the inside track. It's his job to lose. In other words, uh, two like one guy that I'm really watching is Haywood Highsmith. Mm. I, I do wonder if he can ultimately get that starting job. Maybe not to start the season, but if he kind of sneaks in there, they exp- they they did the Caleb Martin thing last year before obviously getting Kevin Love on that buyout. Uh, but they didn't want to, right? right. And Kev- and and Caleb Martin did a great job, but he's small, and they don't want to be as small. Haywood Highsmith is about the same height as Caleb Martin, but his wingspan is much is right. much longer. It's huge, he's, yeah. He's sort of in that PJ Tucker body frame, not as like thick, but uh, in terms of just like the the height and the wingspan, it's there. And I was talking with him and Duncan Robinson yesterday, and Duncan and Haywood has been working out with Duncan Robinson all summer, trying to find some what was the secret sauce to the three point making. Right. Uh, Haywood Highsmith was very streaky last year. If and Duncan told me straight up, it was like, you're going to see these percentages go up like he's going to be a much better shooter. And obviously, Duncan might say that about his teammate. But I just found it like to me, it was like, OK, you're working out with Duncan Robinson, like just by osmosis, you got to be a better three point shooter. Like this is one of the top <laughs> right. 15 three point shooters in the NBA. So right. um, I'll be interested to see if if that if that corner three specifically, he made about 31 percent from the corner last year, I want to say off the top of my head. Mm. If he can get that closer to like 37, 38%, right. that's a yeah. real weapon with a quick release, which is something he's worked on. That's a real weapon. And he and he's sort of that perfect balance of, all right, he can shoot a little bit and space the floor kind of like Caleb Martin, but he's longer. And you can get that defensive stuff that Kevin Love right this stage in his career isn't necessarily giving you in terms of versatility there. Um, you're still giving up some size and some rebounding, but I do wonder if he might uh, be a dark horse to start there. Yeah, but, and, right, but to answer, I'm sorry, but to answer, quite, I don't know if I said this already. I do think Kevin Love has the inside track. Right, and and, and but it's exactly it with Haywood because I do think Haywood by midseason or even when you get into some of those runs, it's it, it'll be good to bring Kevin Love off the bench for a couple minutes for some instant offense if that he could do that, and if Haywood could come in there and be that aggressive, active guy in there at the four because I think that's what they wanted Caleb to do, and Caleb did a good job of that, and even with losing. Gabe and Max Struess, uh for the depth on this team, if you do bring a Josh Richardson, a Caleb Martin, a Duncan Robinson off the bench, a Kevin Love off the bench, I don't think depth is that big of an issue with this team. And I think a lot of people before were saying, God, if they don't get star heavy with Dame Lillard and they bring in that the depth is going to be the problem. I don't really foresee that. Am I not looking at the same I'm thing with as you. most people. Right. Okay. That's what I I'm with you. I actually think this team is deeper than it was last year. Right. I, I, I And that's with losing Max and Gabe. And that's crazy yeah. to even say, because they were big contributors. But I do think Caleb Martin, as a starter last year, coming off the bench, this could be where all of a sudden he comes on and it's like, Caleb, listen, we know you can provide instant offense when you're on. This is it. Come in the game. Mm-hmm. If you want to put up your 18 that way, do it. You're 16 that way. Let's do it. And I think that's actually a better role for him than being in that starting lineup. But I don't I don't foresee depth as an issue. I just don't see it. The Caleb Martin thing is a great point. He's kind of like their utility player. He's their right. backup Jimmy Butler in a lot of ways. And they want him to come off the bench because of all that versatility and stuff that he brings. They don't want to pigeonhole him into being a power forward because that's, right. that's not what he is. He's more of a two guard than he is a power forward, to be <laughs> right. honest. So. Like it, it, he was playing way out of position. Um, the other part of that too was you get Kevin Love for a full season now, right? And that speaks to the depth too, because by the time the playoffs rolled around, like this team was so beat up, they had right. to work so hard to get every rebound, right? Not just to even play defense against bigger teams, but literally just to rebound on a nightly basis. You wonder if just having bigger bodies there is going to, and plus Orlando Robinson and Thomas Bryant, who right. are really good rebounders too, like having them available is going to help this team in the long run stay deep and not be as injured as they were last year. Um, Nikola Jovic was hurt last year in his rookie season. He's back. And by the way, he is sort of the head turner through these first two days. People are really talking him up the more you talk to people uh, in and around the Heat organization. Jaime Jaquez is drafted because he's supposed to be sort of this instant, you could play him right away kind of guy. All right, now you have another wing that you didn't really have last year. Uh, Josh Richardson is a great plug-and-play option as well. I think this and and I think the Heat already got better at their backup center spot than they were last year when they right. started the year with Dwayne Dedman, who was obviously out of the rotation and then off the team by the time the year was over. 
Orlando Robinson is legit. Like that is a dude, and he could win that starting job over Thomas Bryant. Just because they signed Thomas Bryant does not mean that's his job right. as, that, as Bam's backup. So there's going to be real competition there for the first time in a while. Like real legit, interesting competition behind Bam. So I think this team is deeper. I think it's much more versatile than the one last year. I think there's right. a lot of different lineups that they could go big. They can go small. They could, like I said, they could play Caleb at the four. At the four. They could start Caleb at the two if they want. Like there are right. so many different ways that this team could play. I think depth is actually a strength of this team as opposed to last year's team. All right. So last one before I let you go here, Wes Goldberg joining us here on Francis Corner, talking some heat basketball because we are starting the season quicker than you think out there, people, if you haven't really been watching the rookie Jaime and you, and Jokic, what what are you expecting from them? And I, I, maybe Jaime not as much because he's going to have to earn his spot, earn his way into that rotation. But they've been talking about Jokic for this whole summer. It was brought up when Spolster was on the podium. We we saw the highlights from Serbia. Like he's actually looks like a player that could fit into this rotation and maybe be something weird, like something special in this rotation. What are you expecting from him before I let you go? Uh, from Jovic, I'm expecting um, I'm expecting minutes right away. With Jaime, I think he's like you said, he's going to earn those minutes. I do right. expect Jaime to have real minutes by the end of the regular season. So, but like just that, whatever that's worth. But mm -hmm. uh, for Jovic, I, I love the versatility. I loved watching him in the FIBA World Cup for Serbia. Uh, Spo used the word connector when he was he asked did. about Jovic. Uh, a very and that's good. Sort yeah. of like it, it's a great word, and it 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 does sound sort of like cliche coach speak. But knowing Spo, like that's that's a big compliment. Like he doesn't just throw that out there. Like that's a real thing for him. And so um the fact that Spo is also overseas for the tournament and him and Jovic were able to grab some dinners, and because drinking is 18 in right. other countries, he was able to have maybe a little bit of wine he shared. Hope with he me did right on Monday. And um um, a little bit of red wine with Spo and, and talked about sort of what he was going through. And I thought one of the more revealing things that Jovic told me was. He didn't know if he was going to play for Serbia in the World Cup because he didn't really know what the Heat wanted him to do. And because he lost so much of his rookie season with the back injury, he went to Spo. He's like, what do you think I should do? I would like to do this, but if you don't want me to, that's fine. And Spo said, go. I want you to do this. Like, let's see you at this level of competition. I think it'll be good for you. And Jovic was delighted and went and played great. He averaged 10 points per game on a really good Serbia team that was yep. better than the Amer American team, by the way. It finished, with, it finished better than the American team. Um, and a team that is... Uh, got a lot of chemistry, a lot of continuity, a lot of veterans that Jovic grew up watching, uh, NBA talent like uh, Bogdanovic um, on that roster. And they kept looking for Jovic. They kept giving him the ball. It's like he was, he was the youngest guy on the roster, but they didn't treat him like that. They were like, okay, young pup, watch how it's really done. Like, oh, no, right. get, up, get up here. You're actually going to start with us, and we're going to look for you. We're going to look for you in transition. We're going to look for you to hit these catch-and-shoot threes. Um, and Jovic was able to hit those catch-and-shoot threes at like a 42% clip or something like that. Um, and to go back to what Spo's point was, just make quick reads and quick decisions. And when you're playing at the NBA level, when you're young, that's the most important thing. You talk to coaches, they call it point fiving. You make decisions in half a second, point five of a second. And that's what they want to see from Jovic. Uh, he didn't really get the chance to show that or do that as a rookie. And if he could do that as part of a, maybe not the starting mix, but in a real rotation role right away and just, okay, you get the ball, you either swing it to another player take the shot or put it on the ground and attack the basket right. and just keep doing that. And if it's in transition, put your head on the, uh, put your head down, run the floor, catch the ball, finish with a layup. Like that's what they want. And then defensively just be in the right spots. Um, I think they're going to be really impressed with them. I think we're going to be talking about Jovic a lot this season. I hope so. I really do. I really hope we are by the you know mid season, not the end of the season, by mid season where he's getting good minutes. He's in the rotation and, and because they need that, they need another body or two. They can't have Jimmy go through the regular season or Kyle Lowry go through the regular season. Bam, I'm okay with if he has to lead this team for the season. But the older guys, you see what we have in the playoffs when they're there and they're playing well. Yeah. You need that going forward. Wes, always good talking to you. I'm going to bug you again soon. I know practice just started, so you are a busy man now. <laughs> but it's always good catching up and talking ball and not football, talking to basketball because I'm so <laughs> excited. Hoops is back at this point now. Uh, we'll bring on Crancis Corner again soon, I promise. My pleasure. I'm not worried about the Dolphins for the record. Okay, good. And we got our football talking. We, had it. we got it in one way or another. You knew it was going to happen. That's Wes Goldberg. <laughs> He's a writer. He's a podcaster. The Locked on Heat. He's stuffing the ringer. He's getting in touch with hairdressers. He does everything. That's Wes Goldberg. Wes, uh, that's it. Well, that's it for Crancis Corner. Today. I was almost going to bring up more football stuff. That's where my mind is at this point. This has been Crancis Corner with Wes Goldberg.